Welcome to the Windows Computer and Technology channel and um, part two of why businesses and schools and hospitals get hacked. Why do they have ransomware and why a lot of people have data thefts? Well, this is part two of another way that they get. So part one, we talked about social engineering, which is a very uh, psychological way of doing it by knowing how to exploit, you know, the human uh, vulnerabilities. On part two, we are going to talk about phishing and spear phishing attempts. What's that? Well, it involves pretty much only one way, and it's the emails. Emails, um, I've said it many times here when we talked about security, it's kind of the number one way people get bitten by malware. And so what happens is that when they click a link that they shouldn't click or an attachment that should not be clicked, well, they get into the problem of downloading malware into the PC or on the device and then having um, that infection uh, do all sorts of things from ransomware, where they're going to ask money to retrieve uh, data that has been encrypted to uh, anywhere to um, simply stealing data. So it could be a keylogger looking at all the data that you need to access devices and so on. And because business is interconnected, it might not be just one computer that's going to be um, hacked and going to have problems with the malware. It could be tons of machines all interconnected together. So the phishing is always an email that might look like something you need to look at. It might be a simple email, and we see it all the time. Uh, oh, please check the invoice and the attachment because I think there's a, mi a mistake. And, of course, they're going to click on the invoice, which is basically not an invoice, but uh, malware that's going to try to install itself on the host machine. And the spear phishing is even better because the spear phishing is also... Uh, email that's clearly dedicated with your name to the person. So once again, this one, it takes a little more time to create, but is more effective because you have the impression that they know you because your name is there. So they'll go into a directory of a company. They're going to look at an email and the name of the person associated with it. And then they're going to see, oh, Susie is associated with that one. Okay, we're going to write the email and say, hey, Susie, nice to, uh, you know, talk to you again. And they're going to say, well, you know, last time you sent me this email and uh, I was wondering if you could take a look at the document that I, uh, I need to uh, write. Or, you know, there's this document, this legal document that you need to look at. And, of course, the email is personal now. So you have the impression that that person really knows you. You don't really think about it. So that's even worse because you have maybe even more chances of clicking on links, on attachments uh, that are going through this email. So that's another way, and it's probably one of the most popular ways of getting hacked. An employee somewhere will have clicked on a link or on an attachment that they shouldn't have. Once again, how do you prevent that? It is by educating your employees making them scenarios where they will be confronted with real and fake emails and see if they can, you know, at some point they get clearly the, the hang of it of what looks like a real one or not. Uh, education is top. A lot of people are going to say, well, you know, good antivirus in the different sections or, you know, that's not the way it works. Even enterprise does not rely on antivirus to protect themselves. They rely on employees they rely on knowledge. They rely on IT departments doing certain barriers. Um, and antivirus is not the number one. So that's another way that uh, these companies get hacked into. If you enjoy my videos, please subscribe. Give us thumbs up. Thank you for watching.